Good afternoon, everybody. It's another episode of Financial Note with Startup Grind Nashville chapter. I am Sade. I'm your financial ambassador. And tonight we are honored to have our guest, Sharmika Hunt. She's a financial advisor. She's a financial coach. And is it mortgage loan officer? Yeah. And guess what, y'all? She is a Nashville native. What other way to pop off the month of August with the financial note with a Nashville native? A little bit about Shamika. She, like I said, she is from Nashville. She's a financial coach, financial advisor. She knows how to take your money and make more money with it. So I'm going to let her take it over for a little while. Shamika, I'm so glad to have you tonight. Thanks. Tell us a little bit about you. Um, Thanks. I'm glad to be here. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, Queen. Okay, good. So my name is Shamika Hunt. I am a licensed financial coach. Um, Years ago, my husband and I sat down with a financial coach who educated us about concepts um, that we had never been taught. Um, He implemented financial plans for us that we didn't have in place. And so, of course, we got involved as we are still today. And now we just teach other families how to have those financial plans in place and help other people get in business for themselves. Awesome. Awesome. So <clears throat> tell me, how long have you been on this journey as being a financial coach? We've been around many years, at least five awesome. years, many years. Awesome. Awesome. We just love helping families. Um, we start out with an educational approach. Um, we start out with the educational approach because we realize most people don't have a game plan just to even become financially independent. So we start out with education and then we help put a game plan in place and then we help hold our clients accountable to their goals. Awesome. So not only do you do you educate, you educate, you help solve a problem and your accountability partners to the people that you partner with and able to help. That's awesome. That Those are awesome attributes to be able to um, contribute to your industry because your your client base, I call it tribe. Your tribe is not left alone during the process. Um, you're consulting with them. You're educating them. You're getting them started. You're walking them through. You're transitioning them over into other, you know, attributes of the business that you run. And I'm quite sure that they're able to have access to you you know, as needed, and you're able to get back, you know, with them at your earliest convenience, right? Yeah, yeah awesome. we awesome. become a part of the family. I tell them, man. Hey, family, I'm that's right. Family. That's right. We meet because we don't, it's not a one time meeting for us. We meet several times. Right. You know, we're walking them through, um, you know, most people are still working, then they're retired, and then they're passing their assets. To the next. So we're walking them through every stage of their life. Awesome. I heard you say working. So um, a lot of your tribe, your family, your client base, they're working class. Are they working or are they entrepreneurs? Both. Um, so our main market is middle income America um, because that's the market that is undeserved. There's not a lot of people um, talking to middle income America about a game plan just to retire with dignity. So both both of them. Entrepreneurs, definitely, because the entrepreneur has to understand how money works. Because they're, if they're a solo entrepreneur, then they don't have a W-2, and they're solely dependent on their efforts and their income from their business, you know, what does that look like? So they got to have a plan to stay afloat and stay in business. Absolutely, because we have a lot of entrepreneurs that are still middle America. See, a lot of people get this thing. They get this thing misconstrued with the entrepreneur. They think, you know, you, you jump into entrepreneurship, you got it all figured out, and boom, instant millionaire. No, it's levels to this. You got to work towards this. You got to have, you know, like you said, a game plan that's going to even allow you to, you know, eventually make your exit plan. Exactly. And speaking of exit plans, tell me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about what type of exit plans do you have in place for middle America? So what, to leave corporate America? Yes, to leave corporate America, to be able to retire, you know, to be able to to be comfortable. Yeah, so we do teach them uh, what's called the financial independence number. And that number just tells them the amount of money they'll need to accumulate. 
so that one day they can live off that money for the rest of their life? That's a good number to know. A lot of people don't know that number. Um, some people just leave a job and then they'll say, I'm retired. And then if you watch them a year or two later, they're back on the job. So you got to have a plan in place. You got to be able to save. And, uh, and one thing about us, we get to work with Middle Income America, so they don't need a lot of money to start saving with us, but they got to get started. Right. So <clears throat> what's for them to be comfortable, in order for them to be comfortable, what is a good starting point for them? Well, it depends on the age and their goals. So when we do those plans, they are complimentary, they are customized and confidential. And everybody's number is different. Um, I generally ask them uh, what, how much money do they need coming in on a monthly basis? And then they give me that number. They tell me how old they are. Uh, you know, when do you want to retire or leave work? Is it 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? We look at that number. And then we look at three areas where income is going to come from. One area is a pension plan. You know, a lot of jobs don't offer pension plans these days. You know, they took those away. People start living. Away. They, so people, they took those away. Um, so if a person still work a job but they have a pension, that's one source of income. Um, two would be Social Security. And so we have them go on the Social Security website, www.ssa.gov. And we have them create their profile. It's a minute process. And it'll give a person an idea how much they'll get at retirement. Um, and it's based on their age and how much they paid in. And then three is their personal savings. So their 401k, their, their savings plans, uh, maybe they got inheritance money, or maybe they won the lottery or something like that. But we look at whatever personal savings they have. And then we take all that and we put together a plan for that client. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I did a little bit of digging today. I actually went to the, you know, the SSA uh, website and I was just looking at a couple of stats and it was saying, I wrote them down and uh, let's just say, let's say this would be the, the baby boomer. Those are the ones that are actually in retirement right now. 40.2% uh, only survive from only retirement, just retirement. And we both know, you know, the max amount for that is around 1800 Yep. Can you imagine right. eighteen hundred a month? I, I couldn't. I couldn't. Going, that about going from like three thousand, four thousand a month to eighteen hundred. How would you be able to afford it all? That is crazy. You know, eighteen hundred is a mortgage. It's rent right now. You know. Yeah. So, so oh, it would be forcing them working. We send a lot of older people go back to work just because they didn't have that plan. They didn't have someone that was licensed that could sit down with them. And that's one of the challenges that we're having today. We just talked about their baby boomer generation. They're retiring, they're coming off the job, and we just don't have enough people licensed that can sit down with them and educate them on places to put their money. Traditionally, they're going to take it to the bank. Yeah. Those yeah. banks have historically just given low rates of return. And so there's other places they can put money, but of course, until they sit down with a licensed professional, most of them have no idea. So we do need more people licensed in the investment industry. Absolutely. I would agree with you on that. I would agree with, with you on that because you have uh, a lot of people that preach about making money, you know, and then you have, you know, other other uh, segments, other aspects of business to where, you know, they teach you how to build or coach or whatever the case may be. But not necessarily once you make this money, where do you put this money? So, like, you know, we were just talking about the baby boomer generation. My mom is a baby boomer. My mother retired and gets that a month. Thank God that she, you know, her house is right at being paid off. She doesn't have to take a second mortgage out. Her bills are extremely low. So mom is doing good. You, you know what I mean? But um, in order for us not to go into that pot, that situation where we are retired and you know we're used to making six thousand seven thousand whatever a month and get reduced all the way down to some people don't even get the 1800 a month they don't even get that and then some people don't even work enough quarters through, through the duration of their life to even qualify for that so in order to stop that from happening 
you know, because numbers don't lie. It's, it's, it's saying right here that uh, nine out of 10 elderly people receive Social Security. 40.2% uh, are only living off of that. Me being a 37 year old woman, okay? How would working with you benefit me, like right now? Well, right now, 37. And if you just, what age would you like to retire? At? I, I holistically, like when when we say retire, we're meaning like when you can start drawing Social Security or that retirement age, 62, 65, things like that. We meet some people, they tell us, I'm 37, I want to retire when I'm 45. And that's just kind of not realistic because it takes time to compound and grow money. So realistically, if you're 37 today and you say, let's see, what's the number for you, though? Give me a number so I can kind of be a little accurate. Uh, a comfortable number for me to retire? Oh, I'm going to shoot for the moon, 100 million. <laughs> no, no, no. 100 million. What age? What age? Yeah. So I know 45 is a realistic, but I know I love what I do. So yeah. I know it around 65 to 70, I'd be like, yeah, it's time for me to, you know, to sit back, pass okay. down the inheritance. And 65 minus 37 is 28. Mm -hmm. All right. 28 years. 28 years is a lot of time to accumulate some good money. Right. Mm -hmm. Right, good money. How would I do it? Putting that money to work, you can start investing in new, good growth mutual funds. Um, like I said, send down where the financial person is licensed in the industry. They can educate you on like how mutual funds work, um, things of that nature. But twenty eight years, that's a lot of time to accumulate money and have that money working for you. That's something called compound interest. The rule of seventy two. We always tell people Google the rule of seventy two. It's the rule of 72. The rule of 72. It tells you the approximate number of years it'll take to double or compound your money. Okay. So, so you ain't good doubling years. Can you imagine right. if you got at least like 9% of your money? Nine right. Is, it was eight. That means your money would double every eight years. Mm -hmm. At least three, almost three and a half doubling periods. Mm hmm. So <clears throat> let me bag it back just a little bit. For those that don't understand what compound interest is, can you give us a... That's why I said uh, look at the rule of 72. They can Google rule of 72. It tells you the number of years it takes for your money to double a compound. So think about um, most people know compound interest based on debt. We don't right. know it's on growing money. Come on. For example, if you got a credit card and you charge 100 bucks, on the card, and when you get the bill, you only pay the minimum payment, say it's ten dollars, but you didn't pay the whole hundred dollar balance. Well, they add what's called interest. And if you keep just paying that little small amount, guess what they keep doing? They keep adding interest. Accrual, yeah. So we know it on the debt side. So we educate clients. Let's make it work for you on on growing your money. Absolutely. Instead of just sitting money in the bank a uh, traditional bank that that's 0.01 percent interest right? right right we advise people you know to at least have your savings account maybe your emergency fund right. At the bank. right but any additional money that's used for wealth building IRAs or your traditional IRAs things like that um, you can do conservative accounts if you, you know, looking to buy a home in the next three to five years or down payment on a car, things of that nature. So we've got some conservative accounts we can look at for you. But um, the main thing is having those three basic accounts in place, the emergency fund, a short term account, and then a wealth building account. Wow. Awesome. And I have a question. Um, how do you get licensed as a financial advisor and how much is it? A great question. So we do have a ton of strategic business partners like Fidelity, um, American Funds, Invesco, Franklin Templeton. They actually partner with us um, in business because they know that we're going to be distributing their products to middle income America. So the amount is generally way more than what it would be. But because they partner with us, they cover a lot of the fees for us. So it's, it's affordable. I mean, a person can get in the business and get licensed for under $124. Is that reasonable because they take on the remaining balance so that we can bring 
this knowledge and information to our communities where we you and I talked about weeks ago that mm -hmm. what are the financial companies in our communities? Remember we talked about that? <laughs> I'll wait. What is it? Uh title loan? Right, right. Cash advance. And that's one of the challenges in our community is that we have uh, the cash advance, the title companies, those are the financial companies that are put in our communities, right? Mm -hmm. you to the wealthy side of town, you'll see Charles Swab, you'll see Raymond James, mm -hmm. see Fidelity, right? And mm -hmm. like, how do they get to grow their money over here? But over here, you take our money. Being deprived. And, and, it, and, it's, and it's right in front of our faces, Shamika, like some of us are very in tune and understand what's going on and some of us don't and it's our job to educate you know educate on what's going on and instead of being a consumer because we live in a capitalist country we talk about that all the time absolutely <laughs> and instead of being consumed by debt and consumed by things that make you uh pocket poor and you know make you uh in debt to the point to where you're having to take these loans yes. and advances you know all you got to do is take a couple of dollars and shift it yeah i've been there where i you know years ago and i don't know what the rates are now and and, and she's put in the comment i went to advanced financial like I, I don't know what the rates are now i'm sure they're like probably a thousand percent like it was ridiculous when i used to go back in the day dollar for dollar I went because of the lack of knowledge, right? I didn't understand what was happening and why I couldn't. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> I, I didn't understand, um, you know, compound interest. I didn't understand that, you know, things of that nature. But uh, one challenge that we have in the African-American community when we're talking about that, uh, how we are more materialistic, our spending habits. And so, I want to go into my comments so bad, but I know it's going. Oh, it says they keep calling you to ask you about getting some more money. Oh, maybe the advanced financial. They want you oh, to yeah. keep coming back. Yeah, they want you to keep coming back so you can keep you being a uh, slave to them. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. They want you to get free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw, and I don't know if this is true, but I saw one down the road. Is that 24 7? Are they are really open 24 7? 24 7. I saw that it's on Larry, ain't it? Or, or. Is that yeah. I saw that yesterday. So again, that's the challenge we have. We gotta educate people because the Fidelity and the Charles Schwab and the Franklin Temple, these companies are not in our community. No. They're not no. So most people don't even have a financial representative. They have a, a medical doctor. When they get sick, they go to the medical doctor. They get their prescription to get well. They have a toothache, they go to the dentist get whatever they need to, to excuse me but on the financial side most people don't have a representative no they, they never taught us that they never they, taught us that and and the numbers are getting worse um for african americans we talked a few weeks ago that the average net worth is about seventeen thousand. Seventeen thousand. and what was other communities what was the wealth gap between us and them other ethnic groups is about 171,000. And that's because they invest in stocks and mutual funds and we don't. And so there's an article um, that you can Google. It says African Americans net worth expected to be zero by year 2053. Isn't that something? Somebody got to start listening. Isn't that something? That is something. Somebody got to start listening in the industry license and can go out here and help families you make a change that number i know we can i know we can um i know that we can you know uh people in your industry we're in the same industry we're in the financial industry i deal on the tax side i deal on you know the finance side of funding you do uh, you know the uh coaching the financial coaching and advisory like you your you know when we had COVID, you know, they called certain companies or certain industries essential businesses. We are essential businesses. Somebody gonna have to start listening because see, here's the thing though. I am a firm believer that there's a, a fine line drawn in the sand 
You know what I mean? There's a fine line drawn in the sand and you got some that are going to listen and they're going to take hold of what's being said. And they're going to, you know, begin to put a lot of implement, a lot of things that's being taught. And then you got some that's going to be on the other side. Uh, why y'all ain't tell us? How can we? Hey, listen, all the lo all those times that those posts were being made, all of those uh, trainings, workshops, situations like this, these incubator programs, these platforms, every time somebody went live, you should have been the first one beating the door down. All it takes is 15 minutes of your time and re-gear it towards something that you can learn something that's going to be good for you and not, necess not necessarily feel good to you. Yeah. You know, truth is a painful and inje uh, painful injection. So, yeah. um, like I said, I'm so passionate about it. You know, we sat and talked and just, you know, and it just, it's it's amazing. It's yeah. it's amazing. It's yeah. amazing. So, well, we was just like, like we was just feeding off of each other because we're speaking of the same language and we absolutely and our community. And uh, you know, one thing about being in business, even for the entrepreneurs. You're in business, and you know, make sure your business, is, you know, a purpose behind it. Because I think if you're just in business to make money, you probably won't get very far, right? Because no. people are going to sell a snake, right? But if you got a purpose, you got some passion behind your business, man, you can you can do a lot. You can help a lot of people make a great impact. And that's the thing. We like to bring value. You know, I tell my clients, you don't ever have to pay me a dime, ever. Because I have those strategic partners to pay me, Okay. But what you can do is, if I do a great job for you, just tell somebody my name. Look at my name. There you go. Because I'd rather have that warm introduction than to be out here just trying to get people to buy, 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 buy. You know, but we help them. They're gladly. Oh, yeah. Let me call my mom. Let me call my sister. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank mm -hmm. you. We can do business all over the U.S. I'm not just um, doing business in Tennessee. We're doing business. Absolutely. Right. Amazing. We are not here to sell. We are here to build relationships, nurture those relationships, educate people on what they don't know. Hey, if you are satisfied with the service that I gave you, if you walked away knowing more than what you did, come to me, send your mama now. <laughs> and call your uncle too. Right. I got something for him too. I'm telling you right now, um, the clients, I, I'm just here on the, on the line today. And I'm having to text people and say, hey, I got to call you back. I'm in the meeting. got to call you back. I got a lady just sent me a mortgage client. I have a client that um, she's free to talk. And, you know, she got done a little earlier. So now she's free to talk. I'm like, it's just, it happens like that. You, you got right a good thing. pipeline. Yeah, you do the right thing for people. And we, we always tell people, we'll never ask you to do anything immoral, unethical, illegal. Right? We got state and federal licenses. So we're not in a, put you in a position to lose your license. Things of that nature. So we really enjoy uh, helping families. Uh, but one thing I do want to share. Huh, what you got? You got a question? Oh no, I'm letting you. I'm letting you do your thing. I'm listening to you. Oh, some of the blocks people have with investing. Yeah, they just don't understand how investments work. I think that there's a lot of information online about investing. There's crypto. Um, there's Bitcoin. Uh, I think a lot of people are using their cash apps to invest and. <laughs> Uh, different avenues, um, I, you know, and I don't know if people even know where to look for a person. You know, how do I know this person is licensed to help me? You know, how do I know that they're giving me? See, one thing about being in the investment business and being licensed, just being a licensed professional, the licensed professional is supposed to do what's best for the client. Absolutely. Their pocketbook. But you find a lot of them that do what's best for their pocketbook and not what's best for the client. So interview the person, you know, ask them, hey, you're teaching me about mutual funds, Shamika. Do you have mutual funds in place? And I can say, I got everything that I offer in place. That's how I'm mm -hmm. so happy to share with you. I have everything. You so, are a believer of the product. Yeah. 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 So we have to educate people about that. And then uh, since I just got whole life to be aware of what you think about whole life. Whole life insurance is one of those products that um, historically has given us a low rate of return. And so um, you have a cash value that'll start building up in that policy. Now, what I've seen is like, what, the first five years, I've seen some even up to 10 years, the cash value is zero. 
So that means that you're paying your premium every month. And that money that you're paying, since it's not going to your cash value, it's going to the commissions of the agent. And to mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. making the insurance company rich, you know, we tell people to keep doing what you're doing, but we show the client how to have uh, insurance for a low cost and then have their savings growing in a mutual fund with a, separated from your life insurance so that you can get the rate of return that those insurance companies are giving. Because historically, banks, insurance companies, savings and loans, historically, their uh, rate of return has been low. And you, you used to rule of 72, and it's anywhere from, what, 1% to 5%. So you used to rule of 72, and you could tell that it's going to take forever to grow in a bubble. But mm-hmm. if you go past those traditional institutions and go directly into the global economy, then you can get a greater rate of return. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, it depends on what kind of mutual fund you have. If you have just a regular mutual fund, your money's always liquid to you. Yeah. Yeah, if your money's not tied up forever, um, it just depends on too what your goals are so that you can be in the right type of uh, fund. Yeah. But yeah, but that's the challenge we have. We got to get more people licensed um, in the industry. Um, and, and when we talk about the uh, rate of return in those life insurances being low that's and, and that contributes to that seventeen thousand net worth for african americans mm-hmm. so that's where we're putting our money we're putting our money in products with low rates of return right what, but other our counterparts they're not putting their money in the cash value life insurance policy they're putting their money in stocks and mutual funds mm-hmm. they have people in that community that can educate them on how to invest Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I I've heard it several times. Well, let me talk to my advisor and see how that works for me. I'll get back with you. Yeah. So so let, let's say somebody wants to begin investing, like you know, and they don't really want to break the bank. Right. We can help them get started. Our clients get started investing. Uh, the minimum is twenty five dollars a month uh, to get get going, um, and it depends too on their age. Because if you're fifty, I'm not going to probably let you do an investment. For- $25. Like you got to, uh, if you're serious about getting, uh, fin- becoming financially independent, $25, uh, you, you're not going to be able to retire on $25 a month. So it depends on their age and what their plans and goals are. Absolutely. That goes back to when I was talking about that cup of coffee. Yeah. You know what I mean? Five bucks is what? Five? At least five bucks? Six yes. Bucks? Yes. You can do so stuff. for as little as a cup of coffee. Yeah. You could begin working on your retirement. You don't have to walk away thinking that the only thing you're going to retire from would be Social Security, four hundred one k that you probably dipped in seventy two times. Yeah, and got to pay back that right because there's yeah. no emergency fund in place. Yeah, there's no emergency fund, and that, you know, and doing even during COVID, a lot of people dipped in their four hundred one k emergency fund in place, and so mm-hmm. those are those basic accounts that we help families set up absolutely because so emergencies happen they do and, and they we do. need to be prepared for it and just they do. Be prepared for life mm-hmm. yeah. i okay. was told i'm sorry i'm sorry oh. i was told to have an emergency fund and a true emergency fund mm-hmm. too you mm-hmm. know and uh I've done like over the years, you know, because like I said, I, I come from, you know, the middle of America. I was the single mom that worked, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, had the savings. I used to save my taxes, you know, I used to save my taxes and I never touched it. And I lived off of what I made. I did OK. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, you know, I tell you this here, becoming an entrepreneur a lot of things can, you know, uh, change because mm-hmm. a lot of people look is comfortable with weekly pay or bi-weekly pay. You know what I mean? And, you know, with entrepreneurship, you could be up right. 20K one month. You can be down exactly. 3K. For the entrepreneur that, you know, they, they're doing good. You know, they're doing good, but, you know, they're up this month and they're, you know, didn't hit that target the next month, possibly. What would you say would be comfortable for them? Would it be still kind of like the same 25 dollars a month give or take you know because of the age I mean, limit if their business is you know it depends on you know how long too they've been in business 
and do they feel comfortable, you know, putting the 25? And then before we even do an investment, you know, we make sure that emergency fund has money in it. So before we talk about retirement, let's, in the event of an emergency, in the event you don't make 20000 next month, will you be okay? Like we have mm -hmm. conversations. Um, one thing about entrepreneurship, we got to understand is that we got to have more conversations about entrepreneurship in our homes with our children. Um, cause if they were like me, I was taught to go, you know, go to school, go to college, get a good mm -hmm. job in the company. Me too. And so entrepreneurship is not really taught to us. No. And so when generally when an African-American person go into business, I mean, we kind of struggle financially because when we don't have the educational knowledge, um, our African-American businesses, they only make up about 7% of all U.S. businesses. Um, the average revenue for African-American business is about 72000 per year. So you got to look at, we we got a lot of things to educate our community about. But when you look at our counterparts, um, even Hispanic-owned businesses, they make up about 8% of all U.S. businesses. Um, the average revenue per year is about 152000 Mm-hmm. That's something and your Asian owned businesses they make up 11% of all US businesses and those workers the average uh, revenue there is about 338,000 per year mm. but look at our Caucasian owned businesses they make up 89% of all US businesses and they revenue average anywhere from 250,000 to a million dollars and that's something that is definitely something. And that's something. So we gotta educate our community uh, about entrepreneurship. Um, generally, when we go into business, we don't get a head start, meaning no one is giving us, you know, ten thousand dollars to start a business. So we kind of bootstrapping the business for a while. Mm -hmm. So we gotta just have those conversations that it's a little different for us, but if we get in position, we can change it for the next generation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why you have people like us. That's why we have platforms like this. That's why you are a financial coach. That's why I am, you know, a tax strategist. And, you know, uh, it's just it's a passion and mm. it's a purpose, you know, and uh, when you help them, you help you. Exactly. You know what I mean? I love about it. Oh my gosh, you just said the magic thing. I tell my clients, hey, as we're putting a plan together, help you become financially independent. I am also becoming financially independent in the process. So it's a win win for both of us. Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I, I feel Absolutely. so good about that. Me too. Me too. Um, talking about the bootstrapping. Uh -huh. The bootstrapping is real because I bootstrap starting, like, you know, uh, I didn't know where I was going. I just know I was going. You know what I mean? Now I have uh, a lot more direction than when I started. I just knew that I had a purpose and I just needed to get to it. And uh, people like Erica, if it wasn't for her, I would still be boom, 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 shooting at the target and ain't oh. hitting down no dart. You know, I ain't hitting no bullseye, no bullseye at all. You know, uh, she helped me with strategic planning. How are we going to do this? This is what you go breaking stuff down. You got to have these coaches, people. You have to have coaches, financial coaches, entrepreneur coaches, mm -hmm. therapists. You need these people. We need these people. It's it's absolutely parallel to our success, mm -hmm. you know, and our relevance to stay in business and continue to pump this this journey and passion to the people, to the community, right. you know. Right. And why you become, you know, even in being an entrepreneurship, and if you like myself, I'm a first, I'm probably the first, I'm pretty sure the first one in my in my family, you know, to be in business. So of course, you know, your family all off of the back don't see you as a financial professional, right? Uh, it took some years. I think now they pretty much respect me now though. They don't call uh, whenever they want to now, do they? Right. Because they know that at first thing they'll say, hey, you in the meeting? Oh, I'll call you. Yeah. 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 I so appreciate that. But uh, what I want to say, though, about being an entrepreneur, you know, one thing I had to really do was self-develop. So I have a wonderful coach and he's always talking to us about self-development and getting better. And just because the day didn't work out, maybe the way I wanted it to, I could still get better for the next day. Uh, he's given us tons of books to read, uh, tons of mentors on YouTube and things of that nature. So 
while you're in the entrepreneur journey, you know, fill yourself up with motivation, positivity. Absolutely. You got to listen to the YouTube and, and, and read the books and things like that, because then you start to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. about yourself and, you know, yeah, I have a purpose. This is what I'm mm -hmm. supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to go. Uh, we it's a tenth of a percent. Mm -hmm. If you could just become a tenth of a percent better mm -hmm. every day, right. you know what I mean. I want to say that's around twenty percent better. Mm -hmm. That those are big numbers when yeah. it comes to self improvement and you know education and knowledge and you know what I mean and um uh, just just working on yourself. You know, yeah. it's and a lot you can learn about self development. I mean, you know how to win. Uh, there's a book with how to. Um, oh gosh, how to win influence friends. I can't think of the name of it right now, but there's just so many books out there that you can read. Uh, John Maxwell has a ton of books on. Leadership. I love John Maxwell. Oh my goodness. Yes. So, tons of things. And I think there may be stuff even on YouTube. I listen to uh, Jim Rowan a lot on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, and the other guy, um, Eric, I think it's Eric Thomas. Uh, but it's just, it's, the information is, is available. We just got to go find it. Mm hmm. Absolutely. And listen, I enjoyed our conversation today. It's done blessed my flip flops off. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I know that you got another engagement uh -huh. that is coming up like in five minutes. So can you please go in the chat and put in how you can be contacted, where we can find you at? You can also say it you know, say it as well. Yeah, so you can find me on Instagram, um, Shermika Hunt. Hunt. What is it? Oh, gosh. I don't even know myself. And I'm on Facebook, too, just Shermika Hunt, S-H-E-R-M-I-C-A, last name Hunt. And Facebook is Shermika, I mean, Instagram is underscore Shermika Hunt Mortgage. And my mortgage, I license, I don't know if I said that in the beginning, 235-9345. They like for you to make sure you put your license number out there. But, oh. uh, but yeah, um, and I have put my Calendly link out there. So, you know, conversation, just to ask questions. I'm open to that. You know, let's talk. Because um, like I said, everybody's plan is confidential. It's customized, com uh, complimentary, confidential. So we just have to have that talk about where you are, where you want to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, it was it was an honor. It was an honor to to talk to you. Um, it's never a disappointment when we link up and connect and talk. Oh, really? Good time. Never is. And I really appreciate you for um, dedicating an hour of your time today to be able to come and speak, you know, on your industry and uh, how you can help the community and how you're able to help people reach their financial goals. Which should actually be something like <laughs> I really think like everybody that's born from this point forward, it need to be a contract. I will make sure that I will take care of and govern my finances to take care of my legacy because yeah. you're gonna have grandchildren, they're gonna have children, they're gonna have children, you're gonna have you know, you I just think that it's I can't change the law, but I think it should be mandatory, you know, financial literacy. Should definitely be mandatory because they're but you know they're not gonna do that. Right, you know, right. <laughs> you know but I now have, we I know have. we know now the cash out the bag, baby. We <laughs> we know right. some of us I, know what's going on. I, I had someone tell me they said, Do you know who your great grandparents are? And I was like, um, vaguely, well, do you know who their parents are? And I was like, Absolutely, I do not know. They're like, you know why you don't know? Because they didn't leave you nothing. If they left you some money or left you something, their picture will be out there on the wall and you know who they are. Mm hmm And you might get that lecture. <laughs> Your great-grandmother did not do this for you to... <laughs> right. right. So, learning to do better. Awesome. Yeah, one day at a time. I believe we're going to get there. I'll be honest. I don't think everybody... Is gonna, you know, take uh, seize the moment, you know, and that's okay. That's okay. Tomato, tomato. You know what I mean? Uh, but I, I believe a great deal of us there. There's, you know, it's a it's a great awakening. Yeah. I really believe that, you know, and uh, you know, that's that on that. Yeah. So, well, Queen, you. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. This was great. Absolutely, absolutely. And Queen, listen, anytime. I would love to have you back on the top of next year maybe we could dig 
into some <laughs> strategies, you know. <laughs> okay, good. absolutely. Listen, you have a blessed night, okay? Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night.